Times Memorial. I read somewhere that the ancient Egyptians linked up the uh, sort of annual uh, with the livestock production. You know, because when there is more fodder, there is more livestock, you know. So they tried to establish a, a sort of relation between the two. In a very sensible manner, you should present those things. So there is a political context to the whole thing. In England, what has happened is, in the last 30 years, there have been three governments. There was a conservative government for about 18 years, the followed by a labor government for about 13 years, then followed by uh, a coalition government. No. And so what happens is, the wheel stops and you restart again, you know, from that. So, with this background, let me just go through some of these uh, slides. So, when the uh, conservative government took over, it's a market-oriented government. So, they said things are not happening in the government. So, first thing that it is, what is called, uh, uh, next one please, next one. Yeah, financial management initiative. And uh, so it has become quite fashionable in those days for civil servants to talk of financial management, the management part of it. And who introduced this there? In fact, the two people who are responsible were the managing director of Marks and Spencer, who was one of the chairs, and the chairman or managing director of ICI. These are the two chairs who were wrote there. And so they gave the next ideas, next steps is by that. And the first one is by Marks and Spencer uh, gentlemen. The next steps are what? After the management, financial management was introduced, initiated, giving power to civil servants at various levels in the hierarchy, budgets are given. So they said you fulfill this budget and show the results. That was the financial management. Second one is it did work very well. So they said these departments at the government of India at the central level are not doing well. So let's have agencies. Let us divide the work of policy making and execution. And so they created a huge number of agencies. That's called agencification actually, the uh, second steps. Even that did work. So what followed was a massive privatization, as you all are aware of. And the uh, local government also, uh, they have been given power under the act to fix performance indicators for the local government. Now there are two governments in the UK, the central government and the local government, which is extremely sort of, uh, and the labor government came, what happened is, the GDP was, the government public spending was at its lowest, poverty was very high, international standards, and so, they wanted to absolutely spend much more than what the conservative government was doing. So they introduced the concept of what is called spending reviews, and these spending reviews during their period of 10 years, or 13 years, they had uh, uh, about five spending reviews. And then they had two comprehensive spending reviews. Now the difference between the two is in the comprehensive spending review, they started with zero budgeting. They said everything is zero, there is no budget at all. So let us start now how much is required. It's not an incremental budget. In the sense last year there were uh, 100 pounds, so it, it becomes 110 or 120. No, examine each uh, sort of budget item knock off what is not required, that is zero budget. Set out an ambitious program. The main focus was on four, education, health, crime and transport. Now coming to the labor government, their centerpiece of uh, monitoring is what is called the public service agreements. I think uh, I would spend a little time on this public service agreements. What these public service agreements did was, I told you that there is a three yearly review, spending reviews. Based on each spending review, a public service agreement was prepared between the department and the treasury, that is the finance ministry. And then there was regular co coordination with them, but these budgets were for three years at a time, with year-end flexibilities. At the end of the year, yes, you can readjust certain things, but basically for three years the budgets were there. and so. They told the civil servants that look here, we have given you this flexibility in the budget, we have given you three year budgets, now you produce results. Now, targets were given to them. And then what has happened is, political objectives were there, then the priorities were decided as he was explaining, then targets were fixed, then certain indicators were sort of worked out, 
or measures to measure the whether the target has been reached or not. And so, the most important thing I have seen in UK is okay, if you have fixed targets, you have indicators. What type of targets have you fixed? Uh, what type of indicators have you fixed? I think tremendous amount of work has been done on that. For instance, speaking about the targets itself, they say, and we all know, they need to be smart. Smart, of course, is defined in so many ways. One is they need to be specific. Two, they need to be, need to be measurable. The third is they need to be actionable. A fourth is they have to be relevant to the purpose you have in hand. And fifth is time. You must achieve whatever you are saying within a particular time limit. Now, the good thing in uh, UK is the National Audit Office has been given the responsibility of reviewing each of these things on these tests. Does it fulfill the smart test or not? And so rankings have been given, saying that these targets are relevant, not relevant, slightly relevant, etc., etc., in a particular this one. Then, talking about the indicators, for each target there has to be a success indicator. Now, what type of indicator? Now, they have said again, the word used is cream. They should satisfy the test of cream. Cream is clear and unambiguous. 